How do we find the uh, polynomial expansion for that guy right there? Again, I'm trying to emphasize a different idea. The idea that you don't always have to go back to um, this amazingly powerful formula. I, I love it. There's no respect lost for it. It's absolutely amazing. However, you don't always have to go back to it. You can always reuse things that you already know. So let's go back to, for example, where were we? For this one, 1 minus sine x over x. I wonder if we could use some of the things that we've already done to get that one. For example, we already know that this this is the expansion for sine because we did it a few examples ago. I know that if I multiply both sides by negative or if I divide by x, I would get something like this. Dividing by x would divide that by x. That would give me 1. Divide that by x. That would get me a... Um, think about it. Let's do it in yellow. Let's do it in yellow. If you divide by x, divide this by x, divide that by x, divide that by x, divide that by x, divide that by x, divide everything by x, this would get you sine x over x, and this would get you uh, a 1, and this would get you x squared, because one of the x's would cancel. This would get you x to the 4th, and so on and so forth. Right? And then, uh, what else could we do? We could possibly uh, multiply both sides by negative, because I'm trying to match that, and I've got a negative, so I slap a negative on both sides. Changing that to a negative, that to a negative, changing all the signs here. But wait, there's more. I've got to add a 1 here, so I, I add a 1 to both sides. And that would cancel this one out of there. And so I get, I've got myself an expression for this piece right here. The sine of x over x, 1 minus that. And that's beautiful. See? Without having to do the uh, one by one formula for the coefficients. We are recycling, reusing the things we already know. The other th reason why this is interesting is because we had earlier a... Um, an amazingly fun problem, I think, in one of the previous quizzes or questions. This is off a little side note here. We had an amazingly fun problem that said, uh, study the convergence of this 1 over n times sine of 1 over n, as n runs from whatever, um, converge or diverge. This is really fun, actually. It's, uh, it's, um, it could provide many hours of fun. This actually gives you some insight into that, because you could rewrite it as 1 plus sine of 1 over n all over uh, actually I think this was a minus sorry minus all over uh, 1 over n this is just algebra you put the 1 over on the bottom so it becomes the same thing and this expression looks a lot like this expression they're almost identical except for here you have x and there you have 1 over n and so we could here substitute uh, 1 over n for this and we would get that 1 minus sine of 1 over n all over 1 over n is equal to 1 over n squared divided by 6, that's 3 factorial, minus 1 over n to the 4th divided by 5 factorial, and so on and so forth. These terms, I have, I have n on the bottom, so they become really, 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 really small, incredibly small, meaning that this is a dominating term, suggesting that perhaps, well, you, don't, you shouldn't let the 6 bother you, Suggesting that perhaps 1 minus sine of 1 over n all over 1 over n behaves a lot like 1 over n squared because that's the dominating term. These ones don't dominate. So these two are almost, for large n's, these ones will be insignificant. This will be the dominating term. So this quantity may behave just like that one, giving you a chance to perhaps do that problem using the limit comparison test where you use that as the comparison one. It's brilliant. Amazing, coming from the power of writing functions as polynomials. You like that? There's plenty more where that came from. All right, we'll see you guys here next time. Peace.